Number 24, eliminate all laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship and a violation of free speech and free press. Uh, nothing could get any worse than this when you think of child pornography. And so what they've done, they have done what they call virtue, virtual, uh, virtual child porn, where they'll take the body of an adult that looks young and then they'll put a child's face on it to make it technically legal. And of course, unlimited what they'll do with that person's body. Uh, number 25, break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography and obscenity in books, magazines, motion picture, radio and TV. Of course, 51 years ago, never anybody even heard of the internet, never even co concept of the internet. And yet today, folks, when you think of the porn industry and how it's just dominated all the airways, all the, the, the technical things, everything coming through satellite and, and cable and all the rest. Number 26, present homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. I don't know how many of you have seen uh, the tendency in recent years not to just say we have the right to be homosexual, but now we want homosexuals to be the spiritual leaders. We want to ordain ministers as homosexuals. We want to let them lead us because God made us this way, and we want God to be approving of our acts. So God bless us, and God made me gay, and God made us queer, and God loves me, and all the rest. But of course, um, this is all part of a, an amazing thing. Incidentally, I don't know how many saw this on the news a while back, but a California teacher passed out these cards produced by the Gay, Lesbians, and Straight Education Network to her class of kindergartners. And what it says there, you see this little uh, card here, and this particular one is signed by a little boy named Ronald. By signing this card, I, Ronald, am taking... Uh, uh, taking a stand for a safe and harassment-free school for all students regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity expression. It goes on to describe that you're not going to say anything against lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. This is kindergartners. And this is the, and listen folks, the communists said if we can get America to break this down, We'll have them. <clears throat> of course, number 27 says, infiltrate the churches. Replace revealed religion with social religion. Discredit the Bible. And emphasize the need for intellectual maturity, which, uh, intellectual maturity which does not need a religious crutch. I think it was interesting when Newsweek had a cover story earlier this year, I think it was around uh, the spring, it says the decline and fall of Christian America. Now think about this. Earlier, just about a month before that, was we're all socialists now. So as socialism is gaining and the church is starting to lose, you remember what was said, that one guy said? Socialism becomes a religion when people lose their religion. You know, when you think of the fact that the NIV, the translating committee, hired a, or a lesbian to help translate, the, uh, was on the translating committee of the, the, the most widely used translation of churches in America and Christians in America. That's why you will never read the word sodomites in the Bible anymore in the NIV. Matter of fact, when they do refer to a homosexual, they make sure you qualify by saying a homosexual offender. Read 1 Corinthians where it talks about those that will not enter the kingdom of God. It doesn't say homosexual anymore in the NIV. It says now it says a homosexual offender. It's not technically being a homosexual that would make you there. It's if you are a homosexual offender, like a heterosexual offender. It's the dumbing down and the discrediting of God's word. Incidentally, if your children or grandkids are on, on the internet very much, they've probably been to a site called YouTube, which is filled with all kinds of 
videos. And one of the most popular videos that has been viewed on YouTube is a video series that not only displays the fact America is a loser country, but that atheism and agnosticism is the only way that you should live your life. Incidentally, this, this whole movement is a countercultural group of young kids, even going down to junior highs now, junior high, senior high, and especially college kids who consider God a delusion. The whole concept of God, you have to be an idiot to believe in God. Number 28, eliminate prayer or any phase of religious expression in the schools on the ground that violates the principle of separation of church and state, which is, uh, you know, one of the most obvious destructive lies that's ever been. It's nowhere in our Constitution, nowhere uh, in the Bill of Rights. Nothing is said about this, but it's a concept that's now literally pushed prayer out of our schools Number 29, I'm trying to get through these as quickly as I can. But how many are sticking with me tonight? How many can see that this has happened before our very eyes? You say, John, where are you going with this? Well, I'm going to tell you something, folks. Jesus said, when the salt has lost its ability to hold back corruption, when the salt has lost its savor, when the salt cannot preserve, guess what? It is henceforth good for nothing. You know, when you go to Europe, where much of our influence came through some of the greatest preachers, some of the greatest uh, revivals came and stemmed from Europe, from, uh, from England. You know what? Less than 2% of that population now are believers. Those big, beautiful churches are now antique stores, and many have actually been converted to Islamic mosques. Women say the reason why? Because the salt lost its, its ability to preserve. America's not too far from behind that, folks. Just because we have a rich heritage, and just because we have a nice history, does not mean that we can sit on that for the rest of our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to see another surge of revival among God's people to bring us out of our stagnant sleepiness and wake us up to stand for what's right. Amen? Amen? Let's go on. <clears throat> oh, uh, let me go back to this. I didn't read this. Discredit the American Constitution. This is an FBI writing this 51 years ago who had the inner knowledge of what communism was trying to do. How many know they, they got time and they're willing to take time because what one generation may not let get by with, maybe the next one accept it. So you do it by discrediting the American Constitution, by calling it inadequate and old-fashioned and out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation between nations on worldwide basis. Now we're considering that the Constitution isn't important anymore. Why worry about the Constitution? Why consider it important? Because it's an old, outdated manuscript. We don't live like those people wanted us to live. And now, guess what, folks? Colleges, which are starting up all across the country this week, kids will be in there during all the controversy of socialism right now, and these kids are being taught by majority of liberal scholars and teachers and, and philosophers that America doesn't need a constitution anymore. Incidentally, <clears throat> when you think of the fact that our uh, Second Amendment and the Bill of Rights is becoming an attack. Did you know that when uh, Mr. Obama was senator of Illinois, he voted against the Second Amendment four times? Now think of this, folks. He's now the president of the United States of America. Do you honestly think that he's changed his policy? Absolutely not. Number 30, discredit the American founding fathers. Now this one really ticked me off when I started studying on this. Present them as selfish aristocrats who had no concern for the common man. I actually just typed in uh, founding fathers just to find out what 